Welcome back. You're watching Nation tonight. It seems like Donald Trump is on a winning spree. After Iowa, New Hampshire and Nevada, Donald Trump has now beaten Nikki Haley at her home turf, South Carolina. Haley, who served as his ambassador to the United Nations, was delivered another blow to her candidacy, moving the nomination even further out of her reach. The South Carolina primary had Trump lock in approximately 60% of the vote and Haley at about 40%. Trump clearly is on a track to clinch the Republican nomination months before the party's summer convention. Here's what he said after the win. Up here on November 5th, and we're going to look at Joe Biden, and we're going to look him right in the eye. He's destroying our country, and we're going to say... Joe, you're fired. Get out. Get out, Joe. You're fired. A quintessential Donald Trump there. But remember, addressing supporters in Charleston, Haley said that she would not drop out of the race despite her four straight losses. Her argument? Donald Trump will be unable to defeat Joe Biden in the November general election. I said earlier this week that no matter what happens in South Carolina, I would continue to run for president. I'm a woman of my word. Now remember, even as the primaries continue and it increasingly seems like it might just eventually end up as a repeat of 2020 Trump versus Biden battle, the stakes here are high amid two wars, a not-so-great American economy, and issues like abortion and climate taking center stage. How is the U.S. presidential election race likely to pan out? I ask my guests tonight. Joining me on the broadcast, Ambassador Pradeep Kapoor. He's joining us from Washington, D.C., and Patikrit Payne, geopolitical analyst, is also joining us. Hello, namaskar to both of you. Ambassador Pradeep Kapoor, I'd like to start with you. Uh, you know, what's the general sense there? Uh, there's a lot of uh, speculation about the Trump versus Biden battle being uh, repeated, being seen again this year. Uh, but we know that, uh, you know, Trump has been winning one after the other primary, as opposed to Biden, where there are speculations about his age, about the efficiency of the man. How, what, what's the general sense there in the U.S.? Uh, thank you, Shreya, for inviting me on this discussion. This is a very important uh, subject because U.S. being the hegemon currently uh, on the global stage, uh, whoever becomes president of the U.S., uh, it has a very big impact on global economics, global politics, global uh, geostrategy, you know, the global fight against terrorism, uh, and much more. So the stakes are extremely high for the world. The stakes are also extremely high for the U.S. citizens because for them, the internal economy, the internal politics, the divisions in the society, uh, the fissures between the different races, they've only got worse with time. The immigration issue, the visa issue, uh, there are a lot of challenges. Similarly, for U.S. relations with India, uh, it is a very important barometer because uh, our, uh, you know, relations with the U.S. have been strengthening over the years by leaps and bounds, and the trajectory will continue. Yeah. Uh, similarly, how U.S. deals with the China or Russia or Taiwan issue or other global issues, uh, the whole track changes, climate change, terrorism, so whoever becomes the president, the focus changes, hmm. NATO, Ukraine, Middle East. Sure. So with all these crisis situations in the world, the scene from U.S., from Washington, D.C., is that currently they are about evenly poised. Uh, Nikki Haley will continue in the race for some more time. Uh, most people in the U.S. are betting that by Super Tuesday, which is coming around uh, in a very short time, just in a week plus, uh, when 16 states go to vote in the primaries and more than one-third of the delegates will be decided. Currently, Donald Trump is uh, running far ahead with more than 110 delegates in his back. Nikki Haley has about 20. And then both uh, Ron DeSantis uh, with nine and Vivek Ramaswamy with three. 
they are out of the race already so those delegates yeah. will ultimately very likely switch mm. to donald trump so uh, donald is already far ahead donald trump and he is likely to race ahead on super tuesday mm. michigan comes in in between on uh, okay. february 27th and that's also very likely to go donald trump's way nikki haley was uh, wiped out in uh, okay. terms so of donald trump South of Carolina. course going strong ambassador kapoor and Yes, there are, of course, several issues at stake as well. Patikrit, uh, you know, Nikki Haley has said that I'm not running out of, uh, I'm not withdrawing from the race. Uh, and she's also said that she doesn't believe that eventually Trump will be able to win over in the presidential election over Joe Biden. Uh, but what's been working for Trump? Do you think it is, uh, you know, th the fact that people are now tired of the Biden administration? There's one, of course, uh, his, his perception of efficiency and age. There, there are two wars that are ongoing. There's the economy, American economy, which is not doing very great. Uh, and, uh, you know, Trump, of course, has been voicing his opinions very strongly on uh, whether it's immigrants uh, and the general growing dissent against uh, immigrants, do you think that is also working for him? Good evening and good evening to Ambassador Kapoor. Uh, first and foremost, let me tell you, uh, you know, uh, United States right now is at a very critical cusp, a cusp of a situation where they have to, re have to recalibrate themselves into an era where there are multipolarity coming back again. It is no more the, an era where U.S. can do everything it wants. But unfortunately, Biden, uh, you know, lived in an era of 1960s. He was not willing to accept it. If you look at the last four years, I'm not saying Biden did not do anything good, but there have been a series of faux pas. I mean, look at Biden's uh, withdrawal from Afghanistan, even if they had to withdraw it couldn't have been so abrupt. It created a void, created a bad situation, and it had created a bad impact so yeah. far as America's reputation is concerned. Uh, there is no no clarity as to what was the reason for the Ukraine war. They went for the war. They pumped up, uh, you know, Zelensky. Today they have completely left him high and dry to be completely beaten to the bush uh, by, by Russia. Uh, in you know in, in middle east what is the policy of the united states for how long it will continue the war you know there is no uh, clarity uh, biden administration of course trump also did that you know pumped in a lot of money during the covid pandemic today it created a huge problem with their uh, surplus of or, or, or you know that the economy has been flooded with currencies it is creating large challenges of uh, you know inflation uh, it is on the verge of a recession. So every year today, the, the Americans are dis discussing as to whether the next year there would be a recession or not. And last but not the least, there are two things. Of course, the age of Biden. The, you know, Prime Minister, uh, President Biden is very, mm. you know, he is, is not of an age where he can compete again. Uh, yes, somebody can say that Trump is also aged, but Biden has been seen so many times shaking hand in the air. I mean, it doesn't suit uh, the reputation of the president of the most powerful economy of the world, where, you know, he's shaking in the air and sh shaking mm. hand in the air. It doesn't know. He mentions Mexico as being uh, adjacent to Israel. There are things. And last but not the least, the issue mm. of immigration. Mm. Illegal immigration today is killing United States. You know, there are sanctuary cities where you are not even authorized to do any kind of prosecution over the illegals who have entered uh, United States without any papers. And there are crime after crime going on. The cities are collapsing, at least in some places. These are, these are sentiments which are playing on the minds of the Americans. Trump may not be the best, but Trump is very mm. pragmatic. If you look at the four years when Trump was the price resident, there was not a single incident of United States waging a war or getting into a deep conflict. Trump have actually yeah. pushed up the yeah. economy of United States because he, he he was not somebody who was willing to be you know do the role of a moral policing anymore of the world. Biden somehow capitalized on the initial mm. uh, momentum of the economy that was pump, pump, uh, you know, pumped up by uh, uh, Trump, but he could not carry on. Today, there are major challenges so far as the American economy is concerned. So far as, so far as it's subsidizing the war in Ukraine is concerned, so far as it's stretching on its arms in Middle East is concerned, what does America want to do? That yeah. is the fundamental question. I think Trump was far more pragmatic in terms of accepting that America is not going to play the role of global policing anymore. 
Biden, as I stated in the 1960 era, he still believes America is America. America has to do. And I think there has been a lot of, there's a huge proverbial gap or, you know, proverbial um, a gap between mm. war, the cup and the lip. Um, United States talks about democracy. Look at the things that he has done in the last four years. I do not think today the popularity of Biden is what it was 20, you know, in 2020. The approval ratings is less than 40. It mm. is 37 compared to Trump's 74. So there are fundamental challenges yeah. that the Democrats have. Question is, is there any alternative they have? I don't know. Maybe uh, Ambassador Kapoor can tell, give mm. a better answer than me. Mm. Uh, but the reality is, to, as I you stated, know, uh, it is uh, at a tipping that, point. For that, let me go across to Ambassador Kapoor Pratikrit, uh, you know, the fact that, uh, like Pratikrit said, do you have any other alternative? And when we talk about the age factor, Ambassador Kapoor, uh, you see young candidates like Vivek Ramaswamy, they've pulled out of the race. Uh, a few others have also pulled out of the race. Uh, do you think the alternatives in general in the U.S. presidential race and American politics have decreased? Uh, because, uh, you know, as far as we are concerned here in India, we're only seeing the big names, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, Nikki Haley. These fights are what are being talked about. But, uh, you know, there is Dean Phillips of the Democratic uh, Party. There are independents like Robert Kennedy Jr., Cornel West, uh, Jill Stain. All of these candidates are very less talked about. Do you think there is, seems to be some sort of slump that only the big wigs are taking the attention, or are they, are they, are, are for example, the independents also garnering some kind of support on ground? So, uh, Shreya, the situation here is as follows. Firstly, it is money which talks, and there are uh, very big super PACs which back some of the candidates uh, with big money. For example, even Nikki Haley is getting a lot of funding from some of these super PACs which are opposed to Donald Trump and some of which are supporting Democratic Party but are very keen that Nikki Haley continue in the fight. Uh, so she also has lots of votes from uh, independents who register as independents, even if they are Democrats, so that they can vote for her. Now, uh, the chances of anybody coming into the race are very remote currently because by March 5th, which is Super Tuesday, uh, most of the delegates, one-third of the delegates would have uh, been decided. Now, if one-third of all delegates are decided by March 5th, then for anybody to step in and try to capture more than half of the delegates is quite an impossibility, or rather very, very difficult. So to that extent, uh, unless the legal troubles of uh, Trump, somehow there is some uh, you know, a disruption which happens and uh, he's not able to contest, and on the other hand, if something happens to Joe Biden in terms of his medical situation, his health conditions, and you know, or some deterioration takes place in his cognitive faculties, and he's not able to contest, then the field will again be thrown open on either side. But uh, in case that does not happen, uh, then it's very likely that uh, these two are going to be the finalists. Now, from the Indian perspective, how do we look at mm. the elections? For us, uh, Joe Biden has been a good president uh, for India and for U.S.-India relations. Uh, they have pro prospered. They have gone ahead leaps and bounds. Uh, during the Trump era, again, the relations with uh, India were very, very good. And we made tremendous amount of progress uh, between yeah. U.S. and India. Now, whether it is uh, Trump or Joe Biden or anybody else who comes in, if it is Nikki Haley for some quirk of fate, something happens and she is a presidential candidate. I don't know how she will be perceived on the global stage. She may not be perceived as strong as, uh, you know, Trump, of course. But uh, whether she will be even perceived as strong as Joe Biden was, even though he was very weak, uh, is another question mark. But being of Indian origin, from the Indian mm -hmm. perspective, uh, whether anybody becomes president or becomes vice president, like Vivek Ramaswamy on that side, or Kamala Harris on this side. Uh, yeah. For U.S.-India relations, it's going to be a good uh, period ahead, irrespective of what happens internally here, because the strategic establishment is aware that India currently holds the key to the future balance in geopolitics and geostrategy. And with their clarity in their mind, they realize that China is going to be a very difficult uh, country, a very mm. difficult customer for U.S., and Russia war, till they also mm. adjust and reset their relations with Russia. 
uh, which can only happen with a president like Trump. The chances of uh, Russia-China axis becoming stronger and uh, probably posing a more significant threat to the Western world is definitely going to be an ever-persisting threat. So to that extent, uh, whoever comes in as president or whoever comes in as vice president, most likely they will be very, very positive towards U.S. Yeah. India relations and they will work phenomenally towards that. So we do not have a cause for worry as such hmm. in terms of how, where the relationships are headed uh, in all the sectors that we have, you know, announced yeah, already. So basically, uh, whoever comes at the helm, whoever takes over, uh, it's basically the main factor is India. They will have to maintain and sustain a good relationship with India considering the changing geopolitics and considering uh, India's significance in today's geopolitics. Patikrit, last question to you. you wanna, I want to talk about the young voters in America, uh, a group that has been widely divided over the Israel-Hamas war, over the Russia-Ukraine war. Uh, and it's, you know, from the streets to college uh, campuses, we've seen those divisions. How many, how much of do you think uh, this plus issues like abortion and climate change would impact the voting pattern of the young demographics, young demographic in the country in U.S.? Shreya, from my understanding, the average American has very little understanding of foreign policy. But uh, if you look at what happened in the 1960s, the Vietnam, what did have, have an impact on the American elections and American politics because it had an impact in the in, in the universities and colleges. Similarly, I think in, in this era of social media and especially TikTok, uh, it, which is not banned in the United States, I think there are deep divisions within the United States among the younger generations. I don't think they, they uh, champion the cause of what's happening in Middle East. I don't think they support the American uh, presence there. I think, uh, you know, maybe America from its own uh, geostrategic perspective, they are right to whatever they're doing. But I think the young voters who have a socialist bent of mind for whatever reason, good or bad, I don't think they're too much in favor of that. Uh, whether they would vote for the Republicans or not, uh, that is something that we have to see. But as as a vote catcher, so far as as, a, as an orator is concerned, I think mm. Vivek Ramaswamy and uh, President Trump has been a little mm. better than their Democrat counterparts. Whether that would convert to vote or not, uh, that is only the election would say. But my last point, Shreya, the deep state of mm. United States has a very critical role to play in every election. In this election, I would not be surprised if the deep state mm. does everything desperately possible to pull all the strings to ensure that Trump doesn't come to power. Because if Trump does come to power, then the deep state would have, you know, would be taken for a ride. Mm. Would be taken. They, they, you know, Trump will do ensure that you know the deep state is cut down to size. If you look at the deep state and its, you know, mm. its uh, face off with Elon Musk today, America talks about freedom of expression. The only person I believe today's world, the American who is believing in freedom of expression is Elon Musk. And it's the same Twitter, which the deep state of United States is very uncomfortable yeah. about what is being directed over there, all the different views. So I think uh, there are many such mm -hmm. estranged, mm -hmm. um, you know, ingrained forces within the United States who would be put pushing for the Democrat to win. Yeah. Whether the, it will convert into a Democrat to win, okay. I don't know. But the Republicans, as it seems, the primaries being won by uh, Trump is a mere formality because he is assured of being the Republican nominee. He's the first non-incumbent who is almost mm -hmm. assured mm -hmm. to become the Republican candidate. Um, the chances are high. And so far as India is mm -hmm. concerned, Shreya, my last point is this. None of them will favor India. If India has been given more respect today, I give that uh, credit to the Indian foreign policy uh, diplomats and the government of India, not because of the United States. Even today, under Biden era, we have problem with the Khalistan issue. There are double standards that have been mentioned by, you know, yeah. used by the Americans. During Trump era also, we had problems, but I think Trump was a little more receptive in terms of understanding of problems. So it's a, it's a game hmm. of areas of okay. convergence, divergence, All right, so we'll have to see how it really pans out. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see how it really pans out. Uh, Ambassador Pradeep Kapoor and Patikrit Pain will leave it there. We'll have to see how it moves forward and who eventually becomes the President of the United States. Thank you very much to both of you gentlemen for joining us on Mirror Now and sharing your perspective. Thank you. Namaskar.